The Dwarven Light Puck is a programmable LED accessory used to create interactive visual effects on your game table. Combined with our terrain, it can bring to life magic portals, protective wards, and devious puzzles that react to your player's actions. I'm Nate, and I'm gonna show you how to use this wondrous little device. This is the light puck. It is one inch high and 94 millimeters in diameter, and it has this 41 adjustable LEDs in there. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is conceal this in your build, right? The illusion works best if players don't see that there's a device in there. So there's a bunch of different ways you can hide this in your build. To start, we have uh, the hole knoll piece, which has a nice hole in there for it. You can pop that right over, uh, pressure fits in. There's a removable piece here. This is melted wyverstone, which refracts the light in interesting ways. You can put that on or remove it. Um, but already right there, you have this thing. It's easy to put this in your build. You can put anything you want on here, and it's gonna look uh, neat. This thing is one-stop shopping. Uh, we also have the Oracle pool. That fits cleanly in there. Uh, and this, can freestand anywhere, right? You can put this in your dungeon or your cave or your castle, wherever you want. Uh, so this one is great because you can just put it anywhere. Uh, and then finally we have the Mountain SFX cutout floor. In this case, I have it on four uh, stilts to get it up to one inch high. Uh, but you can also use it without the stilts. The puck pressure fits in there, uh, fits perfectly. Uh, at floor height with the stilts, or you can put it on top of a floor. Uh, and then you're ready to put some sort of topper on it. So you could do something big and flashy, like the Oblivion Nexus. It's right over, you can see the cracks through. If you want, you can pop out the lid uh, to see more lava goodness under there. Put your Oracle Pool over there and put one of our toppers in it. In this case, the water. So you have some swirling water in there. Uh, the further away from the light puck you put the topper, the more diffused the light gets, the more organic it gets. Uh, so you can drop this all the way down if you want it to be a little brighter and more specific, or come up. You could just put something on directly like the uh, Codex Vault. You could just put that straight on without anything else. You could put a Fate Wellspring on there. This one is designed to have uh, some of the light carry through the, uh, the cracks in the side, not just in the center. And you can mix and match any which way, right? So you can pop this into the whole no floor and do the same gags all over again. Uh, you can also pop this in the Oracle pool and then freestand this anywhere you want. Um, in addition, if you want to diffuse this light a little bit or give it some color texture, you can put one of our Phantasmal filters in there and that will give a uh, some diffusion and some color and some texture to the light. So that changes the look of the uh, same program, different look. So I'll put it out there. Same program, different look. This looks particularly well with the Oblivion Nexus. If you can see, right, a lot of times you can just see right down in there um, so they can give some texture in that hole. Uh, makes it look even cooler if your players catch a glimpse down in there. And you can mix and match these as you see fit. Uh, we have more pieces in the works. These are the only covers that we've made to date. And also a lot of our existing pieces can work. I'm sure you'll find some very creative ways to uh, disguise this puck and top it with things. We'll show a few uh, ideas at the very end of this video. All right, so now you know how to put it in your build, but let's talk about why to put it in your build. How can we use this light puck to tell an exciting story? One of the things that makes uh, the light puck special is it's not just of creating lights, but it's interactive, right? The magic of it is that you can trigger the lights and change the lights based on what's happening in the story. And that's gonna give you the most dramatic impact. Uh, the first and most basic trigger is turning the lights on. So maybe your players approach this wellspring or the druid says something in druidic or a drop of elf blood is placed in the pool or whatever it is trigger thing. Uh, you can then do this wonderful reveal, the players do an action and boom, 
light appears, right? And that's gonna be really satisfying at the table that if they don't even know the thing is there and they do something and suddenly, boom, the lights come up. You could also, if you wanted, you can use the fader and you could actually gently fade the, fade the effect up so they might not even realize it's happening and suddenly it's at full effect. Um, but play with different ways to kind of reveal that there's light effect and what that effect is doing. Um, in this case, we're using the Fairy Water program, which is one of the programs you can download. Uh, and once, you're, once your players are interacting with whatever the MacGuffin is, like in this case, let's say this pool was a sentient entity or something. They had to appease the pool to get, um, get some information out of it or whatnot. Uh, we have different trigger buttons in here. So if the players are trying to figure out what to do for the pool, we're not, perhaps they're actions are gonna trigger different results. So what's really fun is they do something and then you can hit one of the buttons on there and have the pool change color. Or um, maybe they, uh, they tell it a joke or something and it, you get this little, uh, we have the red button gives these little, these little white squiggles that kind of dance through. Or maybe they have to start swimming in it and dance through. But fundamentally we have a lot of different trigger programs that you can use so that when the players do something they get a visual reward. Um, and maybe the, maybe the pool has a mood, right? So you can change programs to infected water and so they make it sort of flash red. They're get, it's getting angry at them uh, because of what they're doing. And then they have, to, they have to try and calm it to get it back to its original state. Or you could get really radical and you could change to like the lava eruption program or something and that's turning red to really show its displeasure or maybe it's causing negative effects. Um, but fundamentally, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can change the light on the fly. And you don't necessarily even need to know, right? You can just kind of play with the different programs and find something that's going to be fun or at the time just sort of click and hope that it's a, hope it's a good thing. But there'll be a visual change, right? The players don't necessarily know that it was exactly what you're planning. Maybe you hit eerie emanations. You weren't sure what it was going to do, but it turns out it, uh, it was working. You're like, oh, that is a cool one. But they can suddenly see there's something very, very, very different. But at, at the essence, changing it as a punctuation mark for your narratives is very exciting. When the players do something or something is revealed or something is changed, hit a trigger, change the light, the whole uh, mood can change. And all this also works if you have the same topper on, uh, you can get a lot of the uh, same effects. It's a little easier if you're playing, if you're playing in person, this might work, if you're playing remote, uh, might be easier for your players to see things are happening on if there's a, a wider area to see uh, the light, see what's happening underneath it. Uh, but either way, they hopefully will be impressed and engaged uh, and sitting here trying to uh, trying to role play with this inanimate object. All right, so our second scenario here, we have another 12 by 12 build. This is the Oblivion Nexus on a small mountain build uh, in some lava. Um, the light puck is hidden underneath in the mountain SFX floor. This would be the perfect sort of scenario for uh, the villain is doing a ritual or something is underway, right? And so maybe just as the players arrive, they, they can start seeing eerie lights emanating uh, out of the cracks here. Uh, so I'm using the lava eruption uh, program, which is one of the pro additional programs you can download. Uh, and I like this one in particular because it has a couple of different triggers. Uh, we also have the uh, Oblivion Nexus uh, Volatile and Stable, which you could use for some slight variation. So using the, the Lava Eruption program, uh, we get a cool little bit of light is happening over here. And what you can do, once again, for your triggers are maybe the players do something uh, that affects the ritual, or maybe they get to a big milestone on the ritual, but you could have the, uh, the top of the Oblivion Nexus blow off, right? Which then exposes this inner bit. And then at the same time, to accentuate it, you could use the left trigger button to start having these uh, volatile flashes as part of the thing. So now the, the light's a little more erratic, it's a little more bright, uh, everything sort of stepped up a notch. So in this case, we're using the light puck to make the uh, narrative feel more tense, right? To add a little more drama. So now whatever the villain is saying or now what's happening to the thing, players hopefully will feel a little more uh, tension in the scene. Uh, and then you could, if you want, you could switch back to the regular program if you need to slow it down and save the uh, 
save attention for when something, the next big bit happens. And then if the players uh, stop the ritual or the thing comes to completion, or not, you can use the right trigger, which will create a big final pulsing uh, sort of feel where maybe this is the big moment where the demon is gonna break out or whatnot. But we're essentially just using the triggers to change the tension level of what's happening and or give a result to the, uh, to the ritual. And then you could switch back to volatile or whatnot. Or maybe the, uh, maybe the players disrupt the ritual, stop it, and the light changes to something soothing. We'd use the, uh, the whole null crystals program or uh, a swirling sticks program, something that's like a soothing, so there's a very different color change, right? So the, the players have done something and things change. Or conversely, it could have started, right? We maybe we started with that lava eruption, uh, the ritual sort of hit a point and then suddenly it changes to eerie emanations. And now it's it's green, it's emanating on there. Wait, this is, you know, nothing good has come of this or whatever. You can change the, uh, use the light to show to trigger that something narratively has changed uh, and the players can see it. Very simple to just quickly trigger these on the table while you're playing. And you can kind of, you can wing it, right? It doesn't have to be set in stone. It's just, it's just accentuating the drama that's happening. Our third scenario here is another 12 by 12 build. This is a dungeon build. Uh, and the central bit here is we have the Oracle pool with the Codex Vault topper on there. Um, and this could be any sort of um, elaborate puzzle or ward or um, ancient magic seal or something like that. Uh, the light puck is under there, which is freestanding. The beauty of the oracle pool uh, is that you can push put it anywhere. Um, so we can pop it in the dungeon here. Uh, the really important thing when you're using the uh, the Codex Vault topper, you need to line up the uh, the LEDs. So I like to turn on a uh, turn on a program. You can see there's a uh, there's a straight line, right? There's a straight line of LEDs here and a straight line of LEDs here, and you want those to line up with the uh, the straight lines on the topper here. The reason you do that is, let's say the uh, the players come in, they finally get to this thing and they can activate this great bit. As soon as you trigger this thing, we're gonna use the Codex Vault activating program here. Trigger that thing and boom, 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 boom. See how the individual uh, individual little runes on this are are firing up. Toby put this together and it's, uh, it's very specifically driven towards, we have all these little clear runes under here uh, that are, should have the LEDs directly on them. If you're off center, it doesn't, uh, the illusion doesn't work as well. The effect is designed, you want them really centered up. And this is a good program you can use to help center the uh, bits. So let's say the players do whatever they need to do to activate this thing. You trigger that activating thing, and that should hopefully be a fun, right? They see, oh, wow, wow, it's lighting up, lighting up, lighting up. When we get to the last one, I'm gonna switch to the Codex Vault Gradual Unlock. This is a program that Miles put together uh, that is highly interactive. So you've pressed the left gray button and it'll activate the whole thing. So maybe that's the players say the, uh, the magic phrase or they put in the three crystals or they do the key or something. There's some way to activate this thing and it, it should be really satisfying, right? With that, that, first, uh, that first bit of light just goes out there, right? It's sort of in this kind of static state and suddenly boom, it's bright light, lights the thing up. Um, then there's a middle button here that has four different states. The idea is that there would be four different wards or quadrants or things that you're trying to do and unlock, right? So as they, the players answer each part of the riddle or get the four MacGuffins, the four elements or whatever it is, they can light up each area. Or maybe they're guessing answers to a thing. So if you press the middle button, it will light up one of the uh, one of the quadrants. So see now we have green green lights have appeared in this quadrant. So they've completed that part of the quest, which is hopefully a satisfying uh, visual reward, right? They've done the thing, they got that out. Then to get the next one, you press the button again, it'll light up the next quadrant. However, let's say they do, maybe they're guessing, right? They're trying, guessing we do what's the next element or what's the next piece of the riddle or they 
Buddha thing, but it was fake, where if you press the far right button, it'll give a fail state, right? Everything, a, uh, everything flashes red, but then it reverts back to whatever state you were at previously. So if you had one, two quadrants illuminated, it goes back to the two quadrants. Like Miles really programmed the heck out of this thing, so it's wonderfully interactive. So then as they proceed, they get the third answer. Maybe they get uh, they get something else wrong. It can flash, uh, do it, and then when they get the fourth one, it'll light up, and then it gives a little uh, a little victory circle, uh, which should be satisfying. Then, what I like to do with this one is you put on a program. We have that demo program that runs through a whole bunch of different things. It's a really fun one to put under here because of the masking. Uh, kind of any pattern that has a whole variety of patterns that happen in the demo. This makes kind of any pattern look neat. So I like to leave this on once uh, once the thing is cooking or they're in the thing or it's answering their questions or whatever. You know, this has unlocked the uh, the spirit that will tell them all the secrets of the uh, campaign. This topper is a really neat one for doing any sort of puzzle or whatnot, particularly using the Codex Vault uh, gradual unlock. And if, if you want, at any time, you can also then just sort of set it back to the neutral state and then reset their progress. A bunch of our existing pieces are also backwards compatible with the light puck because either they have a hole in them like the spirit tree or they're translucent like some of the other pieces we'll show you. Uh, in this case, we just took the spirit tree, put it up on some 38 millimeter stilts and threw the light puck underneath it. That allows for some beautiful up light to come up out of the spirit tree uh, and then let you control, in this case I'm using infected water, uh, or swirling sticks, control the intensity of the magic that's coming out of the, the light, the color, the effect. You could even throw a phantasmal filter in there, in this case the swirling sticks, uh, to create uh, more of a maelstrom in there or whatnot. For backwards compatibility, the Oblivion Nexus is a wonderful vehicle for a whole variety of pieces. Uh, this circular cutout takes a wide array of our translucent toppers. So you could take the uh, soul cage portal piece and put that in there uh, and that looks good with any program underneath it uh, you could take the summoning circle from uh, cavern steep you could put that in there you could take the soul cage itself pop it in there uh, just about anything uh, it's going to look particularly cool in there with an up light all right, so a final example of backwards compatibility, taking our dungeon build from before, uh, tore out the floor and the dais, went all the way down to the train tray, put square daises in here, um, drop the light puck in there, and then take, this is the four x four LED floor from Castles. Uh, we're gonna put that right on top and nestle it in. So what we're doing here is we're just basically masking off uh, the light puck and just leaving the little center bit exposed. I don't even have the LEDs on on this floor. In this case, I'm just using this floor as a cutout. And once we have this cutout in here, we can put anything we want on top of there and it's going to look great. So any of our translucent pieces, like this is the fountain uh, from Castles. This is the hellscape portal. This is the Thara's soul cage bottom. The summoning circle, let's trigger. Right, uh, the Shrine of Sasul. Um, the Eldritch Pools insert from Dungeon of Doom. Uh, and that one looks really good with a spiral. So essentially you can put any translucent piece on here and then use any of your fun trigger effects to uh, heighten the narrative based on what the players are doing. Uh, you can do the same gag Take the oracle pool, put the Archaean dais on top, uh, and then you can do the same gag on here, put any of those clear pieces on, and you're masking out everything except what's coming through there. It should look pretty awesome. We're excited to see what you guys come up with with the existing pieces out there. Have fun with it. And remember, whatever you put in there, it's all about triggering the lights, having triggering changes in the effects uh, 
to accentuate what the players are doing. Make it feel like their, their actions are causing reactions on the table. And that should give you a good idea on how to integrate the light puck into your storytelling at the game table. We also have a user's guide video which gives you the basics in getting us started and how to download additional programs, as well as a programmer's guide video which teaches you how to make your own light shows. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on this or any of our other quality content here at Dwarven Forge. And now, it's back to the anvil.